Um, so I'm going to tell you about the lessons learned I, I, from, from Ellie. Ellie taught me everything that I know about managing uncertainty. And uh, I often think to myself, you know, unfortunately, we call this thing the theory of constraints because there's only the word constraints in it. And it could really be the theory of constraints and the management of uncertainty. It's always been there, uh, how to manage all that, right? all the different types of buffers, how you choose them, where you put them, what kind they are, how you look into them to see what's going on, how all that stuff. And within critical chain, focus durations, pessimistic durations. Uh, critical chain fascinates me particularly because you end up realizing that all managers manage a portfolio of initiatives. Uh, so all the rules of critical chain, you should be applying to yourself as a manager. Um, and uh, we do uh, in the company uh, and all that wonderful stuff about being precisely wrong and uh, managing you know, the unknowns uh, I wish I had more time uh, we could talk a lot about uh, the quality of data and all that sort of stuff again I didn't know what order to put this stuff in we don't use mobile phones because of Ellie Goldratt um, because again, my take on management attention uh, and my observation of how people are living, uh, we regularly measure multitasking with our clients. It's nearly always exactly the same. I switch every five minutes, I do 60 things in a day. And why that, whether you're developing uh, pharmaceutical drugs over eight years, or if you're running a, on a day-to-day -day mail to order business, you're just taking yourself to the level of, of unreasonable, but not quite mad stuff, right? Uh, but you, 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 you're, you've lost any kind of quality of thought and quality of life efficiency. You're making mistakes and so forth, right? I, we love playing the, the stupid uh, multitasking game, you know, letters of the alphabet, odd numbers, even numbers, and that stuff we played all the time. It reminds us, you know, that one of the, the main killers of uh, the modern world is uh, multitasking, uh, all these continuous flow of, of phone calls, text messages, and so forth. Uh, we do not use mobile phones in our company. What has changed, what has changed for me over the past 10 years uh, since uh, Ellie passed away? I think we're now, or certainly I am much clearer about the existence of, to keep it simple, two simultaneous constraints. The constraint that determines how much money you make today and how much money you make in the future. Simultaneous in an organization, often in a different place, dangerous if they're in the same place. Um, and how the theory of constraints is getting more and more pertinent. That's to say that we're finding big, bad bottlenecks surrounded by extraordinary amounts of excess capacity more and more, right? If I go back 20 years, people might have 30% or 40% excess capacity here or there. We're now finding people have five times the capacity that they need. And they have a very stupid bottleneck that has only one tenth of the capacity that it needs for the market demand, right? And that's beautiful for the theory of constraints. It will become more and more pertinent because we do. The inertia hasn't changed. The time to buy a machine, train someone hasn't changed. But visibility has gone right down. And so how can you possibly balance anything anymore? Um, because of that, we find we're using high speed uh, accelerated five focusing steps. We just do one, two, five, one, two, five, one, two, five. Where is the constraint? You go there. Within an hour, you reduce the multitasking, delegated the work. It's producing twice as much. You skip to the next one. OK, uh, before we start sensible five focusing steps we do one two three times uh the the, the 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 rapid one because it's just stupid bottlenecks in stupid places and it's it's troubling because i i the, 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 it's at least half more like three quarters of the work we do we end up finding that the initial constraint capacity constraint in an organization is around quality management this is true not only in pharmaceuticals and in food and in airplanes and in IT, but nearly everywhere. And that's troubling because it is the worst possible place to have a constraint. Okay. If we look ahead uh, to, for instance, the next 10 years, um, I, I'm expecting the theory constraints to be used more and more in service industries. Uh, per chance, we had McDonald's as a client. We have McDonald's as a big client. Uh, and it has opened my eyes to, to, to theory constraints in, in services. I've still got a lot to learn and I'm working with uh, John Ricketts on, 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 on his part in, in professional services and IT and stuff. Um, there, you don't want a capacity bottleneck, right? Because that's a queue. So you have excess capacity, but you need a control point. Uh, 
it's all there, but it needs to be packaged more and made more fluent and coherent and properly presented. That there's a big future for theory of constraints and services. And I think we're, we're at the beginning of that. Critical chain project management, uh, I, we often use as the Trojan horse in organizations. Uh, you know, you, you're interested in theory of constraints, start with critical chain because there's no option. Either you fail your, uh, your projects or you do critical chain. And I do believe that in the next 10 years, the PMI will wake up and recognize it as a powerful approach. Uh, maybe we'll have more PC games uh, and, and video games. I hope so, because they're, they're a very powerful educational tool. Um, people are going to less, read less and less books, you know, paper stuff, uh, and probably less on tablets also, the written word. Uh, so, you know, since nearly everybody listening here read the book, the goal with the paper version, what's going to be the, the trigger in the 10 years time? And shouldn't we therefore have another goal movie, a new one, you know, not the start skin hutch, uh, low definition, uh, uh, ownership problem version that's running around these days, but, you know, something with a big budget done properly and probably several versions, one, the goal, uh, and another one in projects, another one in services, another one in IT, another one with governments and all the stuff that Kristen Cox is doing, another one for schools and teenagers and stuff. Uh, let's have some lots of nice movies. And why not crowdfunded? I'm sure it'd be an easy job to have a big budget for a, a gold movie crowdfunded. And finally, uh, because I'm stubborn and I have two lovers, uh, Toyota and Tok, I want to get the Toyota Motor Company to start using theory constraints. Thank you very much. Uh, you don't. I always worry that we frighten off the, some of the newer uh, participants uh, when we've got all these oldies like me uh, talking. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to have 30 years experience to do this stuff. It always is very simple. I repeat, the people actually doing theory constraints in my company uh, are all less than 30 years old. Some of them have just started and they did it very quickly. Uh, I just can't help it. I'm old, uh, but you don't have to be old to do theory constraints. Have a nice day. Thank you.